Hey, shalom, my brothers. All praises to Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai. This is your brother Ayathun with another video. This video here is going to prove, furthermore, that you so called Negroes um, here in America that call yourself African Americans, your true nationality is that you're the Israelites of the Bible, and your language is not he. Your language is not English. It's not a. Uh, it's not a, a, a um, uh, Arabic, okay, none, none, and it's none of the African languages because you like to give yourselves these crazy names like Shaquisha and, you know, like Tupac and all these different names, <clears throat> which um, you believe that you're Africans, um, and you believe that you believe you'll take on any nationality and what, what, what you really are which you are the Hebrew Israelites. Your original language, your original tongue is Hebrew. Now, what I have here is a newspaper article from, as you can see here, this is from the Houston Daily Post, September 20th, 1987. And this is, um, what do they call it? This is a micro microfish. And you can get these um, in most libraries. <clears throat> but um, this also proves... Um, this is also another reason that Esau wants to do it, do away with books. If you notice, back in the day, it was all about hardcore book, hardcore books. The inter the internet wasn't as prevalent as it is today. As far as seeking information, you usually go to the library and then you would get books. You know, you go through search through microfiches like this, or you'd pick up books to read encyclopedias. When um, back in the day, um, everybody had encyclopedias in their house. You know, everybody had a stack of it, had, had a uh, encyclopedias in a crib, and you would refer to these encyclopedias and to these dictionaries for uh, information. <clears throat> but now, what Esau is doing, and this is systematic, Esau is transferring everything from hardcover to the internet. And I'll tell you why. The reason is why, the reason why is because through the internet, you can change history. A hardcover book, you cannot change the history. That's why the scriptures say, blessed is he that readeth in Revelation 1 and 3. Okay. And then, uh, was it Job 8 and 8? I believe it says where to, to prepare the search of their fathers. So these hardcore books, once a book is written, it's written. That's why the scriptures say, as it is written. When something is written, it is it cannot be changed. Now with digital media, you can edit, you know, you can change history in a couple minutes, you can go in there and change history. So when somebody Googles something, it's whatever. Go to Wikipedia, for example. Wikipedia is open source, open information. Anybody could go on Wikipedia and edit the information. You don't know where the information comes from. Um, <clears throat> so the Internet, anybody could change. Esau could change whatever they want. Okay. Now, there's certain things on the Internet like this right here, what we're looking at which are copies of actual written material that existed um, in ancient days that have solid information that if you really want to find the truth about something, you can search these things out. So this is when they're going to pass the net neutrality ban to where all this stuff is cut off, period. And I'm going to show you why. Now, as I said, this is a Houston Daily. This is an actual newspaper. This is a scan of it. And I'm going to scroll here. Now, if you can, I'm sure your brothers can read this. Now, if you write here, it says, this is an article in this paper, Negro who can write Hebrew. Now, once again, this is from, hold on, this is from 19, uh, I just had it slot here. This is from, nine, excuse me, 1897, all right, September 20th, 1897, and it says here, I just had a Negro who can write Hebrew. Now check this out, brothers. Negro who can write Hebrew. He is deaf and dumb and comes from an African town, all right? Which we all know that the, uh, Jake fled to West Africa, pursuant to Revelation, um, was it the 12th, the 12th chapter? And then, um, you know, certain history books you read. We always bring out from Babylon and Timbuktu where explicitly explicitly states that the Hebrews, the Negroes, um, during the Roman persecution, they fled from uh, 70 AD. They fled from uh, from Jerusalem 
and uh, from Roman uh, rule, and they fled into West Africa. Okay, so this is where this uh, deception that were Africans came from, because that's when East, when the, the Ham sold us, and you can read about this in the scriptures, wasn't it in Joel? Okay, when uh, Ham sold us to um to Esau, we were living living in West Africa. So this is why it says he is deaf and dumb comes from an African town because that's where the slaves came from. Now, this is in Hartford, Connecticut, as you can see here. Hartford, Connecticut, September 19th. A young African Negro has been in the city for the last few days who claims to be a Hebrew. He is deaf and dumb and as black as an ace of spades. Now, when you read that, the first, the, I know immediately a scripture comes to mind. And I want to know if any of you brothers, a scripture sparked in your mind, but this is Lamentations. Um... Lamentations 4 and 7, referring to our own people, to Jake. Her Nazarites were purer than snow. They were whiter than milk. They were more ruddy in body than rubies. Their polishing was as sapphire. Verse 8. The visage is blacker than a coal. <laughs> All right? The visage is blacker than a coal. Now, if you read this here, what does it say? It says, he is deaf and dumb and as black as an ace of spades. Right? Reading down, it says, he carries a pad of paper with him and answers all questions by writing them in Hebrew and lo Loshan Kodesh, right? Now, if you, you brothers immediately, this should, you should know what, what it's referring to. Now, this is written in, um, I guess you can call this some old English, but this is Lashon Kodesh, which we always teach you brothers. Lashon Kodesh, which means what? The pure tongue. Or you can say the holy tongue, or you can also say pure or holy language, okay? But it literally, literally means the holy tongue, Lashawan Kudash, okay? So in Hebrew and Lashawan Kudash, which is the ancient, what we call Paleo-Hebrew, it says, what excites the most, what excites the most one wonder is that he writes Lashawan Kudash very rapidly. Why? Because he's an Israelite. Okay, from West Africa and Israelite, probably from Fort Judah. Now, you brothers know, you can go, um, this is very well-known history. Oh, let me go here. In West Africa, um, right here, you had different forts. Now, this is uh, the kingdom of uh, the kingdom of Wuda, which really stands for Judah or Yah Yah um, Yahawada, right? The kingdom of Yahawada was a kingdom on the coast of West Africa in the boundaries of the modern nation of Benin. So these people from Benin and from what, this area of West Africa, they're from what? The, the kingdom of Judah, okay? So this is most likely where this guy came from, but this is just further proof. You just got to put the pieces together, man, okay, that we are the Israelites. Now, going back to this, whoops, going back to the article, let's read, let's read further. Okay. It says, um, yeah, he writes very ra rapidly. It is a language of the books of Moses and is made a special study of spoken and written with the ease only by rabbis and highly educated Hebrew. So in other words, the way this guy, this Jake was writing a Hebrew was like he's known it all his life. And they're saying only highly educated Hebrews and highly educated rabbis could write in a manner that this guy was writing this Hebrew with ease. Okay. It says the Negro was sent to one of the rabbis of Hartford who is perfectly satisfied that he is a Hebrew. Yeah, because this guy probably knows that he's an actual Israelite and he was just, he couldn't help but be astonished at the way this guy was writing. And they probably use this guy. You know, they use them for some information gathering to help them write some stuff or to help them correct um, whatever they was working on. Right. It says a Negro was sent to one of the rabbis of Hartford who was perfectly satisfied that he is a Hebrew. He says that he came from a large town in Africa. We just showed you the, the kingdom of Yahweh, a large town in Africa where there is a tribe of about 20,000 black Hebrews who speak Lashwan Kudash. And are quite prosperous. In other words, we was doing over, we was doing our thing over there, in um, in West Africa. You know, Jake was doing a thing over there. 
they had a, they had a thriving community. You know, they was um, practicing. Um, well, they were practicing the customs 100%, but at least they knew who they were and they had the language, okay? But as the scriptures say, man, in the, in the, in the, the curses in Deuteronomy, the 20, 28th chapter, the Lord said that he was going to send ships from what from America to West Africa um, and to send us over here to an enemy with a stuttering tongue and a language that we would not understand, which are these these crackers. Right. And from then on, the curses heavily fell upon us. And we totally going back to Jeremiah was a 17 and four. We tell, totally fell off from our heritage to where today you tell a, a Negro he's a Hebrew and that his original tongue is is Hebrew and uh, he's he's going to look at you like you got 10 heads, you know, but the most high is going to return all this back to us, you know, um, let's go to Zephaniah, Zephaniah, I believe it was a three and nine, okay, I haven't brought this down in a while, Zephaniah three nine, for then I will turn to the people a pure language that they may call upon the name of the Lord to serve him with one consent, and that pure language is what is that last one could dash. Okay, the last one could Josh, which this man was writing in, you see. So it says, and uh, the Negro was sent to one of the the rabbis, okay, of Hartford, who is perfectly satisfied that he is a Hebrew. He says that he came from a large town in Africa where there is a tribe of about twenty thousand black Hebrews who speak the last one could Josh, Hebrew, and are quite prosperous. He also says that his father is a rabbi in that town, and that. And that is why his father took the trouble to teach him to write these languages, which needed an extra amount of labor on the account of him being deaf and dumb. Okay, deaf and dumb meaning he couldn't hear and he couldn't he couldn't speak, but he can write. Um, he says his people not only write Lashon Kadash, but it is their speaking language as well. <laughs> Did you hear that? He says his people not only write Lashon Kadash, but it is their speaking language as well. So if Jakes are Africans, how come he wasn't speaking the African tongue? This shows you that this group of Negroes, so-called Negroes, was different than the rest of the continent of Africa. These were Hebrew Israelites, okay? It says um, his people not only write Lashon Kadash, but it is their speaking language as well. He left home a few years ago and has seen a good deal of the world. In each town, he hunts up the Jewish section, and there they give him clothes, food, and money. Uh, what surprises him, he writes, is that no Hebrew knows of his countrymen in Africa. Yeah, going back to the curses, okay, where we totally fell off from who we are. All right. So this here, man, this is irreputable proof of who we are. Okay, because history does not history does not lie, you know. So I'm not gonna go on and on, man. This is the main point. Um, I'm gonna put the link to this in uh, in the what you call it in the description, and I would like you brothers to to re-upload this video uh, as much as possible because this this cannot be denied, man. This cannot be denied. This is an actual newspaper, okay, and an actual newspaper. So anyway, with that, I'm going to say Shalom. All praises to you. How about Shimmy? How about Shai? Shalom.